in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today, the topic under discussion is the pillars of society. The name of the playwright is Henrik Ibsen, the Norwegian playwright. Henrik Ibsen was born on the 28th of March 1828 at Iskane, a small town located on the southern coast of Norway, engaged in export of timber. His father, Knud Ibsen, who was a small merchant, had married Mary Cornelia Edinburgh, whose father came from North Germany, and Ibsen is thus a distinguished example of exceptional power which frequently springs to children from mixture of races in the parents. Unfortunately, when he was eight years old, his father's business collapsed and he had to face poverty and hardships of life. He was unsociable since his school days and remained friendless and solitary. Because of his rebellious nature, he attacked traditional opinions and civilized conventions through the play Love's Comedy, which made him so unpopular that he had to leave the country for Italy, where he relaxed and achieved a peace of mind due to a climatical and environmental change. In 1885, in 1885, he revisited Norway. At the Dorthium, he made a remarkable speech to a club of working men. He said, Merely democracy cannot solve the social question. An element of aristocracy must be introduced into our life. Of course, I do not mean the aristocracy of birth or of the purse or even the aristocracy of intellect. I mean aristocracy of character, of will, of mind. That only can free us from two groups will the aristocracy I hope for to come our people, from our women and our workmen. In this place, all my hopes and expectations for this, I work all my life and with all my strength. He was not associated with any definite school of socialism, but proved himself social reformer. He was the man of the iron will, as he was called by his countrymen. Basically, Ibsen was a poet who was concerned with eternal truth. He was social critic who was inclined to exposing social evil. The chief defect of his place is humorlessness. Humorlessness means that lack of lack of humor. In other words, we can say that his plays were quite serious, that spectators lose their interest in them. He was a he was the writer of the highest caliber who used the knife skillfully and boldly to cut to the core of social diseases. The problems Ibsen highlighted were not only local problems of Norway but those social problems hold universal position. For example, in his popular works or in his popular place the first popular plays, play appeared in 1862 and that is Love's Comedy. And 
other play 1866 was born in 1867 pierre yent 1877 the pillars of society 1879 a doll's house in the play brown he highlighted the problem of religious faith without love in the in period the redeeming power of love in a doll's house he highlighted the issue of the status of women in ghosts the influence of hereditary in the pillars of society the importance importance of truth in our dealings with others and and in the play the enemy of the people the the loneliness of conscientious man conscientious man the play status of women became controversial among his other plays the play the pillars of society represents the delicious irony of epsan on those controversial lies which are labeled as the base of social and domestic life and now let us move forward to his personal statement regarding regard his works when ibsen was writing this play by this play we mean that the pillars of society he had an optimistic and naive faith in the liberating result that the truth could potentially have on the life of an individual this can be seen in his letter to king osar on september 20th 1877 expressing his aim he claimed that he intended to lead the vision and thoughts of people in a different directions and show that falsehood merely dwells in the minds of individuals themselves which can be eradicated through inducing a sense of personal and cultural liberation now let us move to the characters of the pillars of society so here the chief characters have been mentioned carsten barnick he is a ship builder and he is the most important pillar of society why because he had lot of influence and wealth in the society mrs barnick his wife olaf their son and he is of 13 years old maratha barnick costen barnick sister joan tonison mrs barnick's younger brother lona hessel mrs barnick's elder half sister dinandorf a young girl living with barnick Rulan a schoolmaster on a foreman of Barnex shipbuilding yard now let us move to the summary of the play as uh, the first and foremost character as has been, has been mentioned in the play is of the Barnex is of the Hanrik Barnex Benrick Henrik Burn Burney Carsten Burney the undisputed leader of the town by wealth and influence he is the owner of shipyard that is the source of earning for the most of the town's people he cunningly built the project of the promised sea coast railway and brought machines into the yard which made his employ on avail allow the workers of the trade to their jobs 
imposed by the machines. Consequently, on gets a warning from Bernick to stop his stimulating speaking or he would be sacked. Bernick's bogus moral excellence and philanthropy earns him an elevated rank in the society. In reality, he had betrayed the love of his life. Love of his life is Lona Hessel. By marrying her fortunate and wealthier half-sister, Betty, his life becomes a series of successes based on his dishonest dealings. There's a scandal against him and his family related to past years. The scandal is directly the result of Bandrick's bad character for having illicit relations with Mrs. Dorff, a married woman. But he shifts it on the shoulders of John Donison, who is Mrs. Bandrick's brother. Why he is going to shift his guilt on the shoulders of John in order to in order to save his reputation and stay unharmed. Bernick also forces John to leave, the, leave for America. In this way, Bernick takes two advantages of traveling. Of traveling of home, of traveling of John. One is guilt and the other is of theft. The guilt is that one man was found to be coming out of Mrs. Dove's home through the rear window. The man was burning himself, but to save his honor in the society, he put the blame on John, who accepts it and sails to America. And he is also followed by Lona Hessel. After his departure, Burnett spreads the rumor that John took away a large sum of money from his firm. The rumor helps him in overcoming financial crisis as his creditors believe in his honesty and give him a grace of time. The rich man Bernick then enters into a deal with other businessmen and buys all properties at cheap rates such as Forestes mining areas laying along the route of the projected railway line to the town. Mrs. Dove's husband deserts her and after her death, Dina becomes alone in the world. Dina is the daughter of Mrs. Dove. She is adopted by Burnett's sister, Maratha. Dina is the source of annoyance to Burnett due to her liberty-loving conduct. Rulan, the schoolmaster, loves Dina, but due to his moral cowardice, he promises her only to marry when she can improve her position. Burnick realizes that a spur line through the town will conveniently bring timber and minerals to his shipyard. Therefore, he aims the building of railroads for his personal benefit, while apparently he presents it to be in the favor of townspeople. Furthermore, Barnick caught in a dilemma of sending the worn-out ship underway at his earliest and earned profit, or to save the life of his crew by not sending the un repaired ship afloat. Burnick's, Burnick's dooms starts when Lona and John return from America and the old gossip revives. John does not know that Burnick had spread a false story with staining his character by blaming, blaming him for taking away a large sum of money from his firm 
and having physical relations with Mrs. Dorf. Despite, while John does not have any intention to reveal the truth and promises, promises Bandrick that Lona would not disclose the secret either. Lona is fully determined to make Bernick confess his crimes. She ends up achieving her aim by compelling Bernick 